is amazing grace. This is a faith that you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free. Saturday was silent 
surely it was through Since when has impossible to ever stop you Friday's disappointment Sunday's empty tomb Since when has impossible to ever stop you This is the sound of dry bones rattling This is the praise make a dead man walk Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again This is the sound of dry bones rattling Come on, can you make some noise in this church this morning? I, Mark, I am ready to sing, man. That's some, that's some, that's Amen. some good stuff, but I, I'm going to be obedient and just pray for you this morning. But listen, I, I am so overjoyed, so overwhelmed about what God's doing in our house. Amen? What he's doing in our church in the first service, we had a young lady, an eighth grader. Her name was Lauren. She was baptized this morning. We're still setting baptism records in BCF Church. Amen? Are you doing well this morning? Come on. Are you doing well this morning? So good to see you. So, so good to see all your lovely, friendly, uh, smiling faces. Before I forget, uh, just something super important in my heart. Pastor Kenny, welcome. Good to have you in service today. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. 
him, his beautiful family, his lovely wife. So good to see you guys. Good to hug your necks. Folks, we serve a God who answers prayer. Amen. And I know just talking to a few of you here this morning, so many people just in need of healing. So many people in need of just a touch from the hand of God. And I, I want you to hear this. Hear, hear me when I say this. You may be here for whatever reason, for whatever choice you made to come here, but God's got a plan for your life. He's got a plan for my life. And that plan only comes to fruition when we humble ourselves and we seat ourselves under the authority of prayer. I believe that we are a praying church. Look around, all of you are miracles. In each and every one of our lives, I, I may not get the names right, but I, I know the gentleman here on the front row had a tremendous accident, still here worshiping with us, amen? These are just, and again, I can't remember everything and then I don't have all the names to associate with every miracle, but in every aisle of this place seats a miracle. And it's because of a, a praying, praying church. And I want to challenge you. Don't forsake the power of prayer. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says that don't, do not be anxious about anything. Everybody say anything. He says, but in every situation, how I many you believe God cares about your situation? Listen, God hasn't forgotten about you. He hasn't forsaken you. He is in your situation. Don't believe the lie of the enemy that you don't matter, that, that nobody knows that you exist, that you're in it all by yourself because that's a lie from the pit of hell. And the Bible says, but in every situation, pray and present your petition to God. And he says in every situation, he goes a step further, in every situation, be thankful. How many of you know we could do a little bit better with being thankful? Come on. Am I just talking to myself this morning? My wife tells me every time, I promise I'll pray for you, Pastor Bro. I'll shut up in two minutes, I promise. But my wife tells me every time, she says, I do these things for you because I love you. And sometimes a little thank you goes a long, long way. Come on, man, am I talking to the right group this morning? Sometimes, sometimes when things are done for us, we take it for granted. Sometimes when people love us, sometimes when people go out of their way, we overlook those things. But God says in every situation, be thankful. In your good, in your bad, be thankful. In your with and in your without, be thankful. And I believe it's so important that in our church and in our prayers that we show thanks to God. And we can do that with one another when we pray. And I want to pray for you. I want God to touch your hurt. I want him to touch your pain. I want him to touch your emptiness. For those of you that need healing in your body, I don't need to call you out, but you're trusting in God for healing. You're trusting in God for your strength. We want to pray for you this morning. With every head bowed and every eye closed, Father, your word says don't be anxious. And Father, we are very, very anxious people. Father, we repent of our, our, our doubt. We repent of our fear. And Father, we take a second. We just take one moment and say thank you for it all, God. Thank you for every situation, Lord. And whatever our situation is this morning, God, we give it to you. Last week, we nailed it to the cross and we said, we'll trust you with this situation. We'll trust you with this person. We'll trust you with this relationship. We'll trust you with this need. And Father, that's what we do today. We present our request to you. For every person that's represented in this room, man, woman, boy and girl, whatever the need may be, Father, I pray that you send your Holy Spirit and you touch every heart, you touch every person and remind them how much you are there with us. You are a close God. You're not far off, God, but we can pray to you and we can see your hand and your presence immediately, immediately in our life, God. And for that, we say thank you. For all the prayers that you've answered, God, we say thank you. For all the prayers that you're about to answer, God, we say thank you. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in advance, in Jesus' name. And if you believe that, shout amen. amen. Come on, let's continue Woo. to worship the Lord. Out of agreement 
Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, oh, what a day. You called my name. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, but you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, my young love is the end that I'm Good morning, good morning. Would you guys please find somebody around you? Welcome to, to BCF on this beautiful Sunday morning. Good morning again, everybody. Come on. You guys are social, social, social butterflies, social butterflies. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Me and the lovely Miss Stephanie is going to be tag teaming you guys today. Some special announcements and uh, welcome everyone joining us online. Come on, let's give all our online visitors a welcome. I. Uh, I, me, me and Misty Don, we uh, watched last week online and we saw you guys nailing it to the cross without us. We forgive you, but uh, we're, back, we're back in the house. So again, definitely a great, uh, just a great service for everybody Do, doing the online servicing and hosting the online services. We really appreciate it. That way we can still be with you all when, when everybody's out and about. So Miss Stephanie's got some announcements for us. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll finish up here in just a second. All right. Hello, BCF. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Hi. Woo. Love y'all. All right. I have a special announcement for our BCF ladies. So I'm sorry, boys. This is not for you. Womp, no boys womp, allowed. Womp. Womp, womp. So we want to invite all of our ladies to um, a special event. We have our very first coffee talk of the year happening. Woo, that's right, get excited. It is, yeah, it's gonna be Saturday, April 27th at 9.30, right here in our worship center. We're gonna get together and enjoy some coffee, treats, special giveaways. We're gonna worship with each other um, with some beautiful music. And we are gonna have an amazing message on um, restoring and healing our family relationships. So you do not wanna miss it. And we wanna see you there. So here's how you're gonna get there. You're gonna take out your phones right now, ladies. Get them out, I have mine on stage. See, it's allowed. We're allowed to have our phones in church. And you're gonna look up at the screen and you're going to scan that QR code. Or if you have our Church Center app, you just 
go on the app and click events and the women's coffee talk will come right up. You hit register and you give that $5 registration fee and you are in, we know you're coming. We are so excited to see you. You don't wanna miss it. If you need help registering, there will be some of our amazing ladies from our team in the back to help you after the service. So, okay, let's get excited. One more round of applause for our women's coffee talk, yeah! Right, thank you, Stephanie, thank you so much. And uh, real important, if you didn't grab your your, your, your bulletins when you came in this morning, be sure to, to get a packet. Got a lot of good information in there, your notes, so that you're able to follow along with Pastor Bo's message today. And I, I warn you, it is a good one. Remember that you can scan the QR code and follow along in, uh, in, in the service along with Pastor Bo. And also, I believe there's a link available online that you can uh, follow that you can follow also. Real, real, two real important things. Everybody say important. important. We, we are very giving, a very generous church. So we have not forgot about offering. We've not forgot about tithing. If you're visiting us with us for the very first time today, don't feel obligated to give. We're not asking for, for anything from, from you. Uh, be sure to go to the back. If you are visiting to the connect uh, or near the hub to where you can get a special gift actually that we have to give to you for free and everybody loves free, amen? No, 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 I like to. I like free, I like free. I ain't gonna lie to you, I like free. Um, so be sure to step to the back and, and pick up your special gift. For those of uh, you uh, attending BCF, this is your home church, be sure to remember you can give uh, through online giving. You can text any amount to 84321 and uh, cash your check through the envelope system. Be sure to place your giving, your offering, your generosity in the receptacles near the exit. So I said two important things. The last one is we're still on the series. How many of you enjoying the series, Breaking Every Chain? Come on. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. I like free, I like free, but I also want to be set free. Anybody want to be set free and free once for all? Uh, we're continuing in that series today, some very sensitive, very adult subjects that Pastor Bo is going to touch on today. So again, there, there's children's ministry in the back located behind us. If you have small children here with you today, listen, some very sensitive subjects, so you may want to get them into the classrooms. Uh, because we, we don't want to frighten anybody, amen? We want to do everything in order and in decency. With that said, I know you guys think I talk a lot. They say I talk a lot. With that said, the man, the myth, the let... No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Let's give a warm welcome for Pastor Bo, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Devin. Welcome, Thank Pastor you, Stephanie. Bo. Good morning. Welcome to BCF. As he mentioned, we're in this series, Break Every Chain, that we started on Easter Last week, Pastor Juan, our Celebrate Recovery Pastor, led us in the breaking free from addictions. And, and so many of you came forward and you nailed those addictions or those things that are controlling you besides Jesus Christ to the cross. This week, the pastors and I, we, we took all those cards. The pastors, just the pastors, we read through them and we prayed for you. We prayed that God would set you free. Then as a team, we took that stack of cards and we put it in the middle of the table and we, we prayed over you as a church that God would set you free. Jesus breaks every chain. And we're not going to keep those cards. We're planning on burning those cards because those things are gone. But maybe some of you today, you feel like, well, well this, this chain that's been holding me down, it's, it's been all my life. And, and maybe you feel like, well, I, I'm never going to be free, because this is all you've ever known. Maybe you're a little like the elephant. Have you ever been to the circus and you see these huge, majestic elephants in the circus? They're, they're doing less and less of that these days, for good reason. Because maybe you wonder, well, how do they control these huge, powerful creatures, the most powerful land animals on earth? Well, they start when they're babies. They take a baby elephant and they tie a little rope to its leg, and they tie that rope to a stake in the ground, and they nail that to the ground, and the little baby elephant's trying to get free. And it comes to the conclusion, I will never be able to break free from this little rope. And the elephant grows up believing, I will never be free. And so even as adults, they don't try. Did you know that an adult 
elephant is strong enough to uproot an entire tree? It is strong enough to break that little rope, but it believes I'll never be free, and it stops trying. And maybe that's where you are today. Maybe you've stopped trying to be free. God came to set you free. Jesus breaks every chain. See, Jesus said the thief, that's Satan, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But my purpose, he said, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Jesus has a rich and satisfying life for you. There was this one time where Jesus, he had just started traveling, he had just started teaching, and he and his disciples had arrived at a well in Samaria. And I want you to, to join me in reading this. We're going to be in John chapter 4 most of today. John chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus' disciples had gone into town to find food. He's there by himself. And he says to this woman, Give me a drink. And she said, How is it that you, a Jew, are asking a drink from me, a Samaritan woman. For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Just a side note, racism is nothing new. In Jesus' days, Jews and Samaritans hated each other. They ignored each other. They didn't want anything to do with each other. But Jesus doesn't care about what is normal, about what is acceptable in culture. He is there for her. So he says this, if you knew the gift of God. And who is saying to you, give me a drink? You would ask him, and he would give you living water. If you only knew the good things God has for you. And friends, Jesus has so many good things for you here today. He has a rich and satisfying life for you. If you only knew. Well, now the woman's intrigued. Sir, said the woman, you don't even have a bucket, and the well is deep. So where do you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and livestock. See, this is the well that her ancestor Jacob drank from, and all her family drank from. This well is all she has ever known. And Jesus said, Whoever drinks from this water will get thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water I give him will never get thirsty again, ever. Could you imagine never being thirsty again? Can you imagine never going back to this, this, this thing in your life where you come to it again and again, you keep hoping I'll be satisfied, but each time it leaves you empty? What if you never again crave this thing that is hurting you and maybe is hurting the people around you, the people you love? Jesus said, in fact, the water I give him will become a well of water springing up within him for eternal life. See, Jesus is using this well they're at as a picture of this woman's life. All her life, she has been coming to this well, she's been drinking from this well, and all her life, she has been searching for something that will fill her, searching for something that will leave her satisfied, but she keeps coming back to the well, and it doesn't last. Friends, is there anything like that in your life? Where you keep coming back to it, you keep hoping, this is going to make me happy, but it doesn't. Maybe it leaves you feeling guilty or dirty. And no matter how often you come back to it, it doesn't last. Friends, Jesus has something so much better for you. He offers us living water, satisfaction that stays with us. And this woman is beginning to think, man, I, I want that. I want that satisfaction. Can this man offer me something that's going to last Something that will make me truly happy where I'll never be thirsty again. And look at what she says. Sir, the woman said to him, give me this water so I won't get thirsty. And watch this. This gave me goosebumps. 
and come back here to draw water. If Jesus could just give her something that would, that would satisfy, she would stop coming back to this well that does not satisfy. Now, up to this point, maybe she thinks they're talking about literal water, but Jesus is using this well as a picture of her life, and he's about to make that very clear. So then Jesus said this, Go call your husband and come back here. Seems kind of random. They're talking about living water, and all of a sudden Jesus is like, oh, by the way, go get your husband and come back. It's not random. I don't have a husband, she answered. Here's Jesus. You have correctly said, I don't have a husband, Jesus said. For you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. So what you have said is true. What is Jesus doing? He's calling her out of denial. See, he's pointing out the well that she has been coming to in her life is sexual relationships. And she keeps coming back to this well and hoping this time I'll find love, this time I'll find meaning, this time I'll find happiness, and it doesn't last. And she's been through five marriages that have not worked out, and she's just given up on marriage. Now she's just sleeping with some guy who she's not married to. She keeps coming back to the well that leaves her thirsty Friends, do you know that is the definition of insanity? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and hoping for different results. And maybe that's where you are today. Maybe you have turned to sexual sin to find happiness, to find validation, to find comfort, to find love, but it leaves you empty, and it leaves you broken, and it leaves you guilty and ashamed. Friends, this does not satisfy, and this is why the Bible says run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does, for sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. God says, this, this sexual sin, this is killing you. It not only hurts you physically, it leaves deep scars emotionally, and it hurts you spiritually. It breaks your relationship with God. It's a sin against your own body. I know in church, sometimes this is a taboo topic. We don't talk about that. But friends, sex is a good thing. And when it's used the way God created, it is a beautiful thing. Here's what Jesus said. From the beginning, God made them male and female. And he said, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. It's a beautiful thing. And he says, and since they are no longer two but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. He says, this is God's plan. This is God's design. And sexual sin is then any, includes any sex outside of God's original design. That's one man and one woman in a lifelong, committed relationship of marriage. Now, at this point, you might be feeling like that woman did, guilty and ashamed. And friends, that is not my goal today. My goal is not to leave you there. That was not Jesus' goal in confronting her with her sin. He wanted to bring her out of denial so he could bring her freedom. He wanted to break her free from these chains that are binding her. And sometimes we have to face a little bit of pain so we can get to the healing. It's like this. A couple weeks ago, one of my teeth started hurting. One of my lower molars toward the back and I would drink something cold, and it would start to sting. And I'm thinking, hmm, I have dental insurance now. I should probably go see my dentist. So I schedule this appointment with my dentist, and she takes a look at my teeth, and she sees, ooh, one of my molars has a really, really bad cavity. But the problem is, in order to treat the cavity, in order to take care of it, she's going to have to pull the wisdom tooth next to it. She needs to pull one of my teeth so she can treat the other tooth. And at this point, I'm thinking, maybe it doesn't hurt that bad. 
you know, maybe I, I can just live with the pain. I'll just keep taking ibuprofen, and let's just pretend that nothing's wrong. But that's not going to fix anything. Because that tooth will just get worse and worse until it rots and dies. Denial is not going to fix the problem. I had to say, you know what, go ahead, pull that wisdom tooth. And friends, that was not fun. I'm still taking ibuprofen today. For a couple days, I was on a liquid diet of soup and protein shakes. And this past week, our team, we got together to celebrate all the good things we saw God do at Easter. We had 39 people baptized on Good Friday. We had 1,200 people show up Easter weekend, and we're celebrating what God has done. He's breaking every chain. And so we go out to eat at Bigos, <laughs> the best fajitas in town. And, and I'm sitting there with my protein shake from Tropical Smoothie. <laughs> Friends, my goal today is not to bring you pain. But sometimes we have to get through the pain to get to the root and find healing. So today I'm going to be sharing with you what the Bible has to say about sexual sin. And this is not fun, but these are also not Pastor Bo's words. This is not just what I believe. I'm going to be sharing with you what God says about sexual sin. Number one, sexual sin includes sex before marriage. Now I know cohabitation and sex before marriage is very common today, but here's what God says. <clears throat> Marriage must be respected by all, and the marriage bed kept undefiled, because God will judge immoral people and adulterers. Friends, I don't want that for you. I want God to bless you. And, and maybe if that's where you're at today, reach out to us. We would love to meet with you. We'd love to counsel you. And if God wills, we would love to, to marry you guys. We want you to see God's blessing in your life. But notice sexual sin also includes adultery. This is one of God's Ten Commandments. You must not commit adultery. These are some of God's top ten principles for life. He says, if you do these things, I want you to have a, a blessed life, a long life. Uh, and he says, do not commit adultery because God's plan is what? One man, one woman together for life. So number three, sexual sin also includes homosexuality. And here's what the Bible says. Again, these are not my words. These are God's words. The Bible says when people turn from God's ways and God's plan for their lives, Romans 126, God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burned with lust for each other. I know today we, we see and we hear everywhere that this is normal, that this should be accepted. But God says, this is not my original design. The Bible teaches this is sin. Now, this is not the worst sin. This is not even the most common sin. In fact, in our churches, I believe we have a much bigger problem with adultery and straight sex outside of marriage. But friends, whatever your sin is today, whatever your struggle is today, I want you to know you are welcome here. We want you here. God wants you here. But I believe our biggest sexual sin in our church is number four, Lust and pornography. Lust is looking at another man or another woman who is not your spouse with sexual desire. And Jesus said, you have heard the commandment that says you must not commit adultery. It's one of God's ten commandments. But, he said, I say, even anyone who even looks at a woman with lust or looks at another man with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And as pastors, as we read over so many of those cards that you were nailing to the cross, we saw what a big struggle lust and pornography is in our church. And friends, I have struggled with pornography in the past. And we can rationalize to ourselves that this is a victimless crime, that we're not hurting anyone. But did you know 
that pornography fuels the human trafficking industry? Not only does this damage our own soul, not only does it, does it destroy our relationships and keep us from having intimacy in our marriages, pornography literally promotes slavery. Now, I've shared with you from God's word today, I, I know this could be painful, like pulling a tooth, but we have to get through the pain to get to the deeper problem because I've discovered that sexual sin, as enticing as it is, we're usually using it to treat a deeper need or a deeper problem. Sexual sin, as bad as it is, as enticing as it is, it's usually not the, the root issue. The root issue is that we have this deep need or this deep hurt in our life, and we're going to sexual sin to try to find healing. We are trying to treat the problem with sexual sin. We're looking to this for something that only God can give us. Again, God pleads with us, turn back to me. He says, my people have done two evils. They've turned away from me, the spring of living water, and they've dung their own wells, which are broken wells that cannot hold water. Underline that, broken wells. Sexual sin is a broken well that does not satisfy. Only Jesus can meet our deepest needs. So here's my question. What is that need you are turning to sexual sin in order to fulfill? Maybe it's acceptance. You feel like I'm not accepted anywhere else, but, but when I'm in these sexual relationships, then I feel accepted. Or I feel like... I'm worthless, but if I turn to this, then I feel like I have value. Or, or I don't get affection at home, so I'm turning to this for affection or for control. I can't control these things. Or I feel lonely, or I turn to this for comfort. Or for me, it was escape. When I'd feel overwhelmed by pressures, by stresses, I want to escape. And my escape was, was often to fantasy. I'd escape to video games, or TV shows, or movies, or comic books, and sometimes pornography. And it was an escape from reality, escape from the pressures, but it was a broken well that did not satisfy. It just left me feeling ugly and dirty and ashamed. We see the deep need to escape, that's not the problem. It's not bad to want to escape. The question is, who am I escaping to? And this is why I memorized Psalm 61, verses 2 and 3. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the towering rock of safety, for you are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. Instead of turning to this that leaves me empty and ugly and dirty, I can escape to Jesus Christ. He is my safe place. He is where I escape to. Jesus is the only one who can fulfill that deep, deep need you have in your life. Today, I want you to hear from another friend of mine who struggled with sexual sin for a long time until he realized the root of his problems. I want you to hear from him now. Hi everybody, my name is Aaron. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ and I struggle with depression, anger, and codependency, and I have over eight years of sobriety from a sexual addiction. My struggle has been with pornography and same-sex attraction. When I was five years old, I began to be sexually abused. I was a lonely child and I didn't have a lot of friends growing up, so when the abuse started to happen, I liked it. I enjoyed it and it, it actually brought me comfort it made me feel good about myself. And the abuse ended when I was 11, and that left another hole in my life that I needed to fill with more of what I was getting before. Um, so I went looking for sexual partners, I went looking for pornography, I went looking for anything that I could find to fill that void. So for a long time, I just, I, I thought that there was something wrong with me. I thought I was broken and I was never gonna get any better and it felt real hopeless. Even though I was coming to church, I, you know, I was, I was singing on Fridays, I was singing on Sundays, we were playing in the band, 
And then I started going to therapy because I realized that uh, I was depressed. That I had taken these, these thoughts of like, of shame and guilt and put them inward. I focused them on myself. And it wasn't until after I stopped hating myself and after I accepted who I was and, and what I was and who God wanted me to be that I was able to let go of that voice, that I was able to not have this fear, like I said, that, you know, if everything went wrong, then, you know, it would be okay because I could go back to sex, I could go back to homosexuality, I could go back to whatever else that I wanted to do. I felt broken and I felt like I wasn't whole. And, and now that, you know, I don't hate myself, now that I accept me for, for, for what God is doing in my life and what he's brought me through, I'm like, like, I'm not lonely anymore. Uh, and not only do I have, you know, my friends and my family and my wife and, and all these people in my life, I know that I have Jesus and I don't have to fight that anymore. I don't have to feel like there's this part of me that rejects him. I feel like I'm whole. I feel like I know who I am and I feel like who I was isn't who I am anymore. I don't know if you caught that at the beginning, but he said he is celebrating eight years of freedom from pornography and sexual addiction. Aaron is walking in freedom today. Jesus breaks every chain. He can break your chains. When Jesus came to that well in Samaria, he knew that woman. He knew what she was looking for. He knew she needed hope. She needed freedom. She needed love. She needed validation but she was looking in all the wrong places. And when he confronted her with her sin, I want you to hear what she said. She said, sir, I see you are a prophet. There's an understatement. He just pointed out you've been married five times and you're living with some guy. She's like, you're a prophet. Um, and then she said this, our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews say the place to worship is in Jerusalem. The first time I read this, I had to laugh. I thought she was like, Let's change the subject. But I came to realize this. She's saying, hey, you're telling me God has the answer for my problems. But you're a Jew, and you Jews worship God in Jerusalem, and I'm a Samaritan, and I am not welcome in Jerusalem. And maybe you felt that because of your sin, because of your choices, because of your lifestyle, you felt like, well, maybe Jesus has the answer, but I don't feel welcome in church. And if that's where you are, I am so sorry. I want you to know you are welcome here. Here's what Jesus said. He said, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Underline this, the Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. The Father is looking for them. He's telling her, the Father wants you. He's looking for you. He wants you to worship him in spirit. That means he'll put his spirit inside you, his Holy Spirit. You can worship him anywhere in spirit and in truth. That means embracing what God's word says is true. God wants you. And this woman said to him, well, I know the Messiah is coming. And when he comes, he'll explain everything to us. And I love this part. He said, I am he, the one speaking to you. And Jesus is telling her that the one you've been looking for all your life, I'm right here. I'm the one who can give you living water, who can give you freedom and healing and hope and validation and purpose. He came to, gave, to give life. Jesus brought you here today. He came to give you hope and purpose and freedom and a new life. And maybe you're saying, well, what do I do now? I want you to see what this woman did. The Bible says, then the woman left her water jar. Underline that. She left her water jar because she didn't need it anymore. 
She had what she needed in Jesus. And she went to town and she told the men, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. How you break free today, you do what that lady did. Leave your sins at Jesus' feet. Give your desires to Jesus. Give your sinful habits to Jesus. Friends, that's how I found freedom. For years and years, I struggled with pornography, and I'd go to this, this well that didn't satisfy, and I'd leave, and I'd be like, no, I'm going to change now. And then inevitably, I'd come back to that well because I couldn't fix myself. And then one day, I gave that to Jesus. I said, Jesus, I can't, I can't fix myself. I'm giving you my sin. I'm giving you my, my addiction to pornography. And friends, Jesus has set me free. Friends, I stand before you today with 10 years of freedom from pornography. <laughs> Jesus breaks every chain. Leave your sin at Jesus' feet. And then number two, run from temptation. This woman left her water jar and she ran to town. She didn't hang out at the well and see how close can I get to the edge before I fall in. The Bible says, Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Don't hang around with it. Run the other way. What do we do instead? Pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Dive into righteous living. Start reading your Bible. Start serving. Start spending time with God's people. How do we do this? Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. Friends, if you want to be free, don't do it alone. Number three, connect with community. This woman didn't keep her freedom to herself. She ran to town. She told all the men, come and meet a man who told me everything I've ever done. He knows about my five failed marriages. He knows about the sin I'm living in today. But he says, I've come to give you living water. I think he's the Messiah. Friends, don't do this alone. Told you a couple weeks ago, we had our men and meet. We had a great time. And friends, we launched three new men's small groups from that event. Guys, get plugged into a small group. Ladies, we're having that coffee talk later this month. And we also have three open women's small groups. Get connected. Get surrounded with ladies who will love you and pray for you and encourage you. Maybe you say, well, I'm not ready to jump into a small group. Just come on Friday nights to celebrate recovery. We meet here at 7 we have worship, we have awesome music, we have a message, and then we have open share groups where you can start learning about, hey, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one struggling here. See, Jesus came to set you free. You don't do this alone. You need a community. The Bible says the Samaritans from that town believed in Jesus because of what the woman said when she testified. He told me everything I ever did. And many more believed because of what he said. See, now they're listening to Jesus. And they told the woman, we no longer believe because of what you said, for we have heard ourselves, and we know he really is the savior of the world. When Jesus entered that town, she was alone. She was ashamed. When Jesus left that town, she was part of a community of believers in Jesus Christ friends, we have that community for you here at BCF Church, Brownsville Community Fellowship. We want you to be part of our community. But that first step is to invite Jesus in. Invite him to come in and fill you with that living water. Jesus said, my purpose is to give you a rich and satisfying life. Friends, if you've never invited him in, then talk to him today. Just tell him something like this. Dear Jesus, I believe you are the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Tell him, Jesus, I believe. Say, Jesus, please forgive me. Forgive me for turning to these broken wells that don't satisfy. Please give me your living water so I'll never be thirsty again. And I'll never have to come back to this broken well. Say, Jesus, please fill me with your Holy Spirit. If you invite him to come in, he will come in. He will set you free. And you'll never be alone again. Just invite him right now. Say, Jesus, please come in. We love you, Jesus. Amen.
broken I was broken It was only getting darker Valley of the shadow I was hopeless I was hopeless I never thought that I would ever see the day Every single chain would break Or hear the voice of heaven call my name Then Christ came, changing everything. He took my sin shame away. Now every song sing will be for him ever since the moment he walked in. Then Christ came. I was searching for a reason. Believe it, I could ever really matter ever mattered I was hoping I was reaching so desperate for my soul to find a savior why be the savior then Christ came changing everything he took my sin shame away now every song a sing will be for him ever since the moment he walked in Friends, maybe you've been coming to that broken well that doesn't satisfy, and you've been struggling with a sexual sin and an addiction to it, and you say, I need someone to pray with me today. We have a prayer team up here who would love to pray for you. And when we're done, I just invite you, come up. Talk to someone. Pray with them. Christ can set you free today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for creating us for freedom. You are the source of living water. You are the only one who can satisfy. Father, I pray you would set captives free today. Break the chains of sexual sin so we can walk in freedom. We ask this in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Amen. Amen. Thought that I would ever see the day where every single chain would break. Or hear the voice of heaven call my name. Then Christ came, changing everything. He took my sin and shame away. Now every song a single beat for him ever since the moment he walked in. For everybody joining us in, in here and everybody online, we thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, the women, you guys in the back, thank you very much for doing what you do. The, 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 uh, the team in the back, we love you guys, making us sound good. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of this beautiful Sunday. Spend it with somebody you love. Spend it with those that mean the most in your life. God bless. You're dismissed.